Hello, people. <laughs> this is Linda from North Central Texas in my own country kitchen. And, you know, I'm lady in the garden, but today we're in the kitchen. And all of you seem to really love the old-fashioned recipes. And I know there's millions and millions of ways to fix every dish that you cook. They've all been modernized, and by, what I mean by that is you have new ways of cooking them, more ingredients to add, that type of thing. But what I'm going to show you today is an old-fashioned homemade biscuit. Now, this is the way people years ago made them. And that's what we're doing. We're making old-fashioned biscuit. Homemade biscuits. And I'm going to show you the way I always did them. That's the way I learned from my grandmother, my mom, and all the ladies around the countryside where I lived in North Carolina, how they made them. The only difference is, instead of, I always use Crisco. That's what my mom used. The difference in what my grandmother used to use, my grandma Barnhill, she always had homemade lard that she fried everything with. She put in her biscuits as shortening. She used it in everything. Uh, they butchered hogs every year, and um, they made their own lard. You know, they had a smokehouse. They smoked their own hams. They made their own bacon, sausage. Everything came from the farm. So she used homemade lard, and that was the best. It gives the biscuits the best taste that you've ever seen. But most people nowadays don't have access to homemade lard, so Crisco usually is the next best thing that they go to. First of all, before we get into anything else, I'm going to go ahead and grease my pan, and I do that with Crisco. I'll take a piece of paper towel because I don't want to get my fingers all in it. You know how it is when you get in a greasy anything like grease, you know. And I'm just going to get a little bit on the tip of this um, paper towel and I'm going to grease my pan with it. And you'll see this pan is well used. I did a lot of baking in this one pan right here. And sometimes when, you know, you grease your pans your oil gets burnt to the side, your pans get discolored. That does not mean they're dirty. All good cooks, chefs, everybody that does a lot of baking will end up with pans that look like this. They're gonna have black spots. They're gonna have burnt looking spots on them, discoloration. But that just means that that pan has been used a lot. Let me tell you, I know I've worked in kitchens I've seen how their pans and dishes and everything go through their kitchens. They're going to look probably worse than mine because I, I really scrub my pans because I I'll, I'll try to get them as clean as possible. I don't like a dirty pan. But anyway, get your Crisco or your, your lard, whatever oil you're going to oil your pan with, and just get it on the end of that. Uh, and you might have to get some on there a couple of times. And just grease your pan down with it. I've seen my, my grandmother many a time. And her hands were clean now. She'd just dip her hand right down in the lard stand. Come up with a handful of lard. She'd throw it in her biscuit, pan, in her biscuit bowl. Where she was going to mix her biscuits. She had a little bit left over in her in her hand, so she would proceed to, to grease down her biscuit pan with it. And she had a great big old sheet pan that she made her biscuits in. Not no little pan like I've got. Her pan would hold four times the biscuits that I'm making here. And see, all you gotta do is throw that away. You don't have to worry about cleaning your hands or nothing else. It's already done. So I do need to get me a spoon. <laughs> I always forget to grab something. Yeah, I've watched my grandmother many a time make biscuit. And her biscuits were so good. They were the best in the world. And 
the conclusion I've come to, the only difference that of what I do than what she did was I don't have that homemade lard. I have to use Crisco or vegetable oil or something like that to put in my biscuits and, you know, fry my chicken and all that other stuff with. I don't have the homemade lard she had to go in my biscuit. And that was the difference right there. It, it gives the biscuits a different flavor. It just gives them a really good texture, a really good flavor. I mean, you can't beat it. Okay, next I'm going to use self-rising flour. And if you've watched many of my videos, you know I use self-rising flour for everything when I can get it. You know, during COVID one time, the, the counters were so bare, you couldn't even get self-rising flour anymore. So I had to use plain flour. I'm going to start out with about two and a half cups. And this is a half cup measuring scoop. So that was one cup. This is two cups. Or it will be two cups when I get this other one in there. And a little extra to have enough flour there to flour my pan, I mean my, my rolling sheet and my rolling pin when I get through here. Okay, I'm going to get about a, two or three tablespoons. <laughs> That's the way I measure. That looks like about three tablespoons to me. It's in a measuring uh, one tablespoon, but it, it looks close enough. It's not rocket science. You don't have to be exact. Now I'm going to proceed with this uh, pastry tool that one of my viewers sent to me. And I don't know if I'd use them correctly or not. She sent me two. And I don't know if you're supposed to use both of them at the same time or just use one at a time. But I use one at a time because <laughs> I'm not really used to using it. But it sure beats getting your hands down in the flour. And trying to mix it all up like that, you know? So. But just work your Crisco or your shortening into your flour the best you can. Sometimes I use butter. Now, when my son was here over the weekend, I made homemade biscuit. And I made buttermilk biscuit. And I did use butter in my flour for my shortening. I didn't use Crisco. But I wanted to show you just as close to what they used to do years ago on making their biscuits. And basically the way I grew up seeing my mom and my grandmother make biscuits. So just work it in there real good with your pastry tool or, or your hands. Usually I, I just put my hands down in there and do it. But since she sent me this tool, I've been using it and it works great. My grandmother always just put her hands right down in the flour and mixed it up. Mixed up that shortening right into the flour. I know some people think because things are new, they're fixed new ways, they're better, but not necessarily. Some of the old ways of doing things were a lot better than what we do today. And they cost less money. <laughs> now, let's see, I'm gonna get another measuring thing here. I've already hit my head twice on the corner of that counter this morning, or that cabinet door. And I'm doing this with evaporated milk. You can use buttermilk, fresh milk, whole milk, low-fat milk, whatever you want. Or if you don't have milk, guess what? The old-fashioned way of doing it is just use a cup of water. You don't even have to put milk in there. And I'm not going to add it all at one time. I'm going to be particular about how I add it because I don't want it too wet. Usually about a cup is enough.
And yes, my grandmother used to do all this with her hands. And I used to do it too, like I said, until I got my little pastry tool here. And I've been using my little pastry tool. And it's a little dry, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. Because I did add a little bit extra flour, you know, that about a half a cup of flour. Just to have enough to um, have flour to flour my board here and my rolling pin and have enough in the bowl to kind of knead my dough a little bit. But you don't want to overwork your dough. And I can always get more flour. <laughs> and I think I added a little bit too much liquid, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. You can always add a little bit more flour. <laughs> People freak out, you know, when they make something like this. And maybe you add a little bit too, too much water. You add a little bit too much flour. Well, guess what? If you added too much flour, add a little water. If you added too much water, add a little flour. Takes care of the problem. No problem. <laughs> That doesn't mean that your dish or your recipe is ruined, you know? I mean, it just means you need to do it a little different. Okay, I do get my hands in there for that to get that dough off of the hook. And now I'm just going to proceed to get it halfway in a ball to get it up on my... I mean, you don't want to take it out and knead it to death. That's for sure, because you don't want tough biscuits. You want light, fluffy biscuits. And I need a little bit more flour because it's sticking to my hands. <laughs> And I'm just rolling it around to get some flour on the outside of my dough ball. I'm not kneading it. I'm just rolling it to get it to where I can get it out like that. <laughs> I'm going to take my, um, well, I still need a little bit more flour. <laughs> I'm going to have a little bit more biscuits on here than I want or need. I'm just going to lay that right there for right now. <laughs> flour it pretty good. Put a little flour on the top of your dough and then proceed to roll it out. And I don't want them real thin. Whoops. I want kind of a thick biscuit. Now, you can use something like a food chopper. It's about the right size for a biscuit. What I normally do is use a, a little a glass with the opening about the size I want. A lot of times I use one just a little bit bigger than that. So this time I'm gonna use my little cutter. And it's a food grade cutter. I chop up uh, coleslaw and other things with it, so it'll work okay. Only thing about it, it's got uh, 
the teeth on it so it doesn't give you a good clean cut usually. It's the only thing I don't like about using that. I had one uh, subscriber say when I showed how I was chopping up my cabbage and stuff, I was using that food chopper. He says, well, that that is not a food chopper. That's a biscuit cutter. Well, no, it's not. I mean, you can use it for anything you want to in the kitchen. But it doesn't really cut biscuits real good because, like I said, it's got that ferrated edge on it. So I prefer to use a glass. But I'm just showing you, if you have one of these and you want to use it, you can. And I'm ready for lunch. I tell you, I haven't eaten breakfast this morning. I did drink a cup of coffee. <laughs> but I can tell my hands are a little shaky because I haven't eaten. And I'm just kind of pushing them up close together. Because I, I want to get at least 12 biscuits in this pan. You know, they're not going to be perfectly round, and, I, you know, I'm not aiming for them to be perfectly round. I just want all of them to be fairly the same size. That's why I use either a glass or a biscuit cutter or something. And I may have to get another, excuse me, another um, pan to put some of these in. <laughs> That I scrooched them up a little bit more. I could probably get another row. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I hadn't planned on this. I got a little bit too much flour. But I'm going to use it. I'm just going to scooch my biscuits up a little. And put an extra row in there. And it helps, too, if you dip your little cutter down in flour. <laughs> Don't do like I do. <laughs> oh, and we got to preheat our oven to 450 or 425. It heats up pretty fast, so I'm not worried about it. You know what I think, put all this together and I'm going to roll it again. And I may end up with even more than this. <laughs> but it only takes about two cups of flour to, uh, usually make this pan a biscuit. I think I put two and a half, which was okay. I just needed to cut them a little thicker. And I intended to, but it didn't work out that way. Oh, Got to get more flour.
And my grandmother, she never even rolled hers out. She always used uh, her hands to make her biscuit and shape them. I'm doing it <laughs> the cheating way. I'm just using a glass or... See how neat that comes out when you use a glass because it's smooth? If you use a cutter like that, they're going to come out a little ragged. And if I'd have made my biscuits a little thicker, I would have used all my dough. I intended to make them thicker, but they didn't come out that way. And I don't flatten them down too much, but I do kind of even them out on the top. And I'm going to show you a trick you can do with some of your leftover dough. <laughs> Pull your rough edges and turn them under. So your top ends up smooth. And I've got to get another pan to put that in. Get one of these square pans. And I'm going to need a little bit of Crisco. Just to put a little bit of shortening in it. So my biscuit don't stick. That's so you don't waste flour. Now, you can just put that in your pan, flatten it down a little bit, and guess what? That's going to make basically a hamburger size, a small hamburger size bun biscuit that you can use for a hamburger if you want to. See how hot my oven's getting. I'm going to go ahead and put my biscuits in. And my little bun. <laughs> the kids always love that. When you make biscuits and you have uh, some left over, or I know we used to do that when I was growing up. Uh, we'd make shapes, all different shapes with the, the dough. My mom would let us do it. And we'd just lay them out in a pan, all different shapes. We had a lot of fun doing it, just like playing with Play-Doh. Um, I'm just trying to get this flour off my hands. Uh, this is one of the best ways to get the flour off of your hands when you're making biscuits, when you get, you know, that sticky dough all over it. But the time you're, uh, a lot of times I'll put my hands in the dish pan and just wash it all off. But you get a lot of your dough in your water when you do that. And I don't like to do that because then I have to change the water a lot. Your flowers love it because when you water your flowers with your dishpan water, it's like putting fertilizer or plant food to them. They love that. But yeah, that's an easy way to get the flour off your hands. I'll get my trash can. I'm showing you how to do this because <laughs> some of you newbies may not know how to work with one of these things. New people to cooking. You can just take that, hold it over your trash can, and dump it in. And I'm also going to show you the best way to clean it. Get this other flour off of my table. 
Oh, but you leave your biscuits in the oven at a 420 degree oven until they've risen and cooked and they've baked. They've got like a gold, kind of a golden brown. Not You don't want them too brown because you'll, you'll dry out your biscuits. But this is the, e the easiest way I've found to clean this pad is the way I just showed you, or I'm showing you. Because <laughs> my sink is not big enough to stretch this thing out in to clean this flour off of it. I don't know how other people clean theirs. This is the easiest way I found to do it. <laughs> and you're all you're always asking for little tips and tricks for the kitchen, so this is one of my little tricks. <laughs> and then I turn it over if need be. I wash the table off because there's always a little bit of flour left. <laughs> I turn it upside down and then I go over the back because there's always a little bit of flour that gets under the edges of the mat. Don't ask me how it gets there when this thing sticks to the table, but it, it can get under there. And now it's a little bit damp from wiping it. So I'm just gonna hang it right there temporarily. Get my dish towel. I'm gonna dry my table. It doesn't take your biscuits long to cook when your oven is heated. And I probably didn't get mine quite heated enough, but it's heated fast. I mean, it's, a, it's heated enough. And then I'm gonna proceed to dry my mat off. It got the table damp again, so you gotta wipe your table off again. Turn it back upside down <laughs> and dry off the back of it. It's almost dry anyway from just having it hanging there that few minutes. Oops, I just dropped my towel. And then I'm just going to fold it back up and I'll put it away. It's that simple. Can't play. <laughs> now we got all of this to clean up. I'm just going to throw it in there for right now. But how how simple was that? You know, that's the easy way to make old fashioned homemade biscuits. I'll tell you. Yeah, I used to have a set of glasses that were just a little bit bigger than the opening on that particular glass. And that's the one I used to cut my, my biscuits with all the time because uh, I love the size and it fit the pan perfectly. But my glasses got broken and the ones I replaced them with are just a little bit different in size. They're not the exact same size as the other one, so. The 
clean up is just that easy. Of course, I got stuff that I've got in the sink now I need to clean up. <laughs> but, hey. And I got this to clean up. And the, I want to show you the best way to do that. Is take your spoon, don't matter what size, but by now your stuff is dried to your bowl. Just go around and scrape it out. And I just got more flour on the table because it was on the bowl. But yeah, just go around your bowl and scrape it. It comes right off. I know sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I just throw it in the sink, but then it melts. I mean, it, it gets all that flour gummy again, and then it gets in your dishcloth, and it just makes a mess. So this is the way I like to do it. Just scrape all that flour off of your bowl. Scrape it off the bottom. And see all that flour that come off the bowl? I guess you can see it down in there. I'm just going to dump that right in the trash can. Now it can go in the sink. <laughs> and I know I forgot to get my cooking mats to put out there. But one of my subscribers sent me this, these as well, mats, and that's what I'm going to put my biscuit pans on when they come out of the stove so it doesn't burn the top of my table. Oh, we're going to leave this out for now. They're rising up real nice and pretty. I'm going to have some fresh biscuits to go with my lunch in a few minutes. But I can tell you some more tricks. Uh, to make buttermilk, if you don't have any, take your milk, pour the amount that you need, put in about a teaspoonful of apple cider vinegar or any vinegar, let it set for a few minutes, and it'll turn it into buttermilk. So you can use, make buttermilk biscuits then. You can use plain water, or like I said, you can use any type of milk you want to use. Uh, some people put uh, heavy whipping cream in there instead of lard. Instead of using the lard or Crisco, uh, they'll use heavy whipping cream. And by the time you put about a cup of heavy whipping cream in the flour, that's about all the moisture you're going to need in that flour to make a pan of biscuits. And it makes good biscuits. I've done it that way before. Uh, what are some other tips? <laughs> and like I said, you can cut them with anything. If you got a cookie cutter, you can go crazy with shapes with biscuit. Cut them out to the shape you want. Cut out hearts. That'd be kind of cute to, to have a whole pan full of heart-shaped biscuits, homemade biscuits, or stars, or anything. Um, do the old-fashioned way where you pull it off and just roll it in your hand and Put it in your pan and flatten it a little bit. I've done that a lot growing up. I did it when I first started making biscuits. I've done it over the years about 
75% of the time that I make biscuits, I, I roll them with my hands. I don't roll them out and cut them out. But my mom, she always preferred to do it this way. She rolled her biscuits out, and she always took a glass the size she wanted her biscuits to be, and she cut out her biscuits. She used it as a, as a biscuit cutter, basically. <laughs> But, you know, you buy canned biscuits, they're expensive. Have y'all bought canned biscuits lately? I mean, I, I get them occasionally, depending on what I'm going to make. But I don't get them very often, hardly ever. Uh, usually, I make my own biscuit. Now, I have bought, uh, like, pie doughs and stuff like that. If I was in a hurry and I didn't want to make my pie dough, my pie crust. I would buy it main. But I just glanced at the prices on canned biscuits. It's outrageous, y'all. You know how many bags of flour you could buy for the price of maybe two cans of biscuit? And most of the time, you only get about eight biscuit to a can. And I'm going to have 12, 13, 14 biscuits here with two, two and a half cups of flour. Rising up nice, but they need to get hot. I mean, they need to start getting brown. Yeah, I I love cooking at home. I love uh, baking. I love cooking and stuff. I just don't like the cleanup, usually. Um, but growing up, I never knew what a canned biscuit was. I didn't know you could buy biscuits in a can. <laughs> my, Like I said, my grandmother and my mom always made homemade biscuits. Most every single meal we ate, especially supper time, we had a pan of canned biscuit. I'm not canned biscuit, but a, a pan of homemade biscuit. And like I said, my grandmother, she had a sheet pan this big, this big across. And that's a pan of biscuit that she made every meal. But granted, she had 10 kids <laughs> or nine kids because one passed away. But uh, she had a big family. And when she usually cooked after they moved out was usually when a lot of family was there to see her. And she cooked a uh, Sunday dinner and she was cooking in that great big old pan, sheet pan for her biscuit. But like I said, those were the best biscuit. I stayed with my grandmother a short time, and she only lived three miles from where my parents were, so it's not like I moved across state or something. She was in, well, I could walk home because I walked up to my grandmother's quite often, but she was by herself. I forgot where my granddad was, but they decided I'd stay with my grandmother for a few months. It wasn't too long, and I was still in school. And my grandmother would make me uh, egg biscuits to take to school for lunch. And I'll tell you what, those were the best egg biscuits you've ever eaten in your life. Uh, it was homemade biscuits. She'd fry an egg. She'd melt a piece of cheese on it, put it between that biscuit, wrap them up. And I had two egg biscuits for my lunch every day. And they were good. I never complained about it. I didn't mind eating my grandma's egg biscuits. They were good. I mean, you like McDonald's biscuits? My grandmother's were better than McDonald's. They were real close to McDonald's, but I don't know what my grandma did that they don't do, but my, my grandmother's were better than McDonald's biscuits. And you know McDonald's biscuits are good. <laughs> yeah, if, every time I make or bake a dish, a recipe, Sometimes I get to thinking back the way my mom did it and the way my grandmother did it. And you got to understand, when I, and I'm saying baking biscuits and country stuff, I'm talking about my dad's mom because she was country. Now, m my mother's mom was from New York City. That's where she lived all her life. So she did everything the Yankee way, and I learned a lot from her. But I never have seen her make a pan of biscuit. That's something she didn't do. We'd eat some kind of bread, or she'd buy rolls already made or something like that. She did not make homemade biscuits. <laughs> so I got to see what living in both 
spectrums were. You know, I got to see what it was like living as countryfied as you could be. And then on the other hand, I got to see what city, big city life was like living my right smack dab in the middle of New York City. So, and I enjoyed my upbringing. I, I'm glad I got to see or visit both worlds, so to speak, because New York City living is a, so much different than country living. It's, it's like different as night and day. But you know what? My mama, after the, we moved back to North Carolina, after I was, I was probably eight, eight years old, something like that. We moved to North Carolina for good. My dad built a house in his hometown. And I asked my mom years and years later, and this was after I was already grown and had moved out. I asked my mom, I said, Mom, I said, don't you ever get homesick for New York? Don't you ever want to move back to New York City? She said, no. She said, I would never move back to New York City after living here. <laughs> because she started loving the country. She liked the laid back, easy way of living that country folk have. Uh, every, you know, my hometown was so small. Everybody knew everybody. You, you knew everything that was going on. If someone was sick, everybody stopped by to help out or they dropped food by or, you know, something like that. City life is a lot different. They don't do that type of thing there. Check on our biscuits again. They're almost ready. Almost ready. And I hate to put chatting in my videos, but I hate to cut my video off and restart it too. So... Because I found my YouTube subscribers love me talking. They love me telling stories about my upbringing or, or about my family life and that type of thing. And I don't know. I don't know why it just flashed in my mind. But I remember the time when I was staying with my grandmother when I was only maybe 9, 10, 12 years old, something like that. Maybe not even that old. My grandmother was down on the riverbank at the break of day with my aunt. She, my aunt would drive her down there in my granddaddy's old pickup. They'd load up this little two-man boat or three-man boat, go fishing in. And I was out in the boat with my grandmother one day. Of course, she was paddling around. We didn't have a motor on it. She just paddled where she wanted to go. And we got up to the riverbank on the opposite side of where we put the boat in. She was fishing around up in all the nook and crannies, you know, up close to the bank, all the trees and the bushes, because that she knew where, that's where the fish were. Well, she got me under one of these trees where she was fishing. I just happened to look up, and there was a the biggest snake I've ever seen in my life hanging above my head in the tree limb. I like to die, y'all. I had a fit. I said, Grandma, Grandma, get me out of here. There's a snake up there. I'm getting out of this boat. She said, don't you dare get in that water because that's where that snake's going to go. <laughs> she said, just be still. Calm down. I'm backing the boat out. So she took that paddle and she paddled us backwards and she got me out from under that snake. Oh, my God, y'all. I lost a year's growth. I was so scared. It was terrifying. Because, I, you know, there's poisonous snakes out there. I don't know. That's probably a water moccasin that was hanging above my head. And if he'd have fell out of that tree, he'd have fell right on my head. <laughs> and when I was looking up, he'd have been in my face. That was scary. Oh, I'm telling you, that was scary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I have quite a few remembering memories and stories similar to that. And my dad built this small little boat for my Aunt Lois because she was only not much, like four foot and a half. She wasn't a very tall lady. or <laughs> She was short. <laughs> and um, she told him she wanted him to build her small boat, just big enough for one person that she could get out in the, the river with and fish. So he built her a little one-man boat. 
And it was the funniest thing. It looked like a little tub sitting in the water. I mean, it was a boat, but it was almost as wide as it was long. It did come out to a point. It had the seat, and then it had a space behind her, you know, to extend out to make the boat a little longer. And that was it. And she'd get out there and paddle that boat across the river. And when she'd get pretty good ways out, she just looked like she was sitting in a tub in the, in the middle of the river. <laughs> it was just hilarious. But it worked. I mean, it was a good little boat, and she did a lot of fishing out of it. <laughs> I never really wanted to get in it. I wanted a little bit more boat around me than that. So... Oh, they haven't started browning yet, but they will. I'm going to have to get me a cup of coffee, and I don't know what I want to eat for lunch to go with my biscuit. I've got stuff cooked I can just heat up. Because, you know, usually when I do all my cooking videos, there's so much food left over, I just put it in containers and put it in the freezer, or, I'm, you know, I've got, like, these TV trays, TV dinner trays, or the trays that you can freeze food in with compartments. And I'll make my own little TV dinner and put it up there in the freezer. So on the days I don't want to cook or if I just want a quick lunch, I can just take one out and pop it in the microwave and heat it up. And there's lunch or there's dinner. I'd love to hear some stories that y'all probably could tell me <laughs> about your growing up. I know a lot of you have funny stories just like that snake snake story that I just told. Or like the time I come walking out of my house after I was married the first time. We lived in a mobile home and we had cinder block steps. And I come out of was coming out the door one day to go across just next door where my mother-in-law was. Because we were going to go, they were going to see her daughter, which lived in a town past my hometown. And what I usually would do, they would let me go with them. They dropped me off at my mom's, go on to their daughter's house. And then when they came back, they picked me up and bring me home because I had to pass there anyway. Well, I was coming out that door and I'm, thank God, every day that I thought to look down before I step down. Because I went to put step out that door, and I just happened to look straight down with my foot in midair, and there was a rattlesnake curled up on that top step. Oh, not the top step, the second step down. It scared me to death. I froze. I literally froze with my foot up in the air. I gathered my faculties about me because it was terrifying. I drew my foot back, put it down on the floor. I backed up a couple of steps and I almost took a running leap over the door to where I could jump over the step far enough away from that step that I wouldn't be close to that snake. And it worked. I landed several feet out from where the step was and went next door and I told my mother-in-law, I said, there's a rattlesnake on my step. I had to jump over him. Well, we ran back over there to see if, you know, if he was there, if, what we could do, because they were going to try to kill him, and he was gone. I don't know if he crawled up in the block or if he just tethered off, you know, but I was glad he was gone, and I never saw another one after that, but that was terrifying. That, that stunts your growth when you come out your door and you almost step on a rattlesnake. I don't know what in the God's name I would have done if I just put my foot down and come down on that snake, I knew he would have bit me. I probably would have had a heart attack. <laughs> I was only probably 18 when that happened. So yeah, that, that was terrifying. Absolutely terrifying to me. Yeah, there's so many stories, and I don't want to bore you with all of them. Waiting for my biscuit to get done. All they need to do is get brown. Why are they not browning? 
It's kind of like a pot of water. It takes forever for it to boil if you're watching it. Or if you're in a hurry, it seems like it never wants to boil. Well, that's the way my biscuits are. Seem like they don't want to brown. I got up again this morning and my eyes were almost swollen shut. Because I was out in the yard yesterday, you know, messing with my rose bushes and moving garden soil. And the wind was blowing. I did have on a mask, but I had no protection for my eyes. And I'm allergic to everything that grows out here. I'm allergic to uh, mushrooms or, you know, mold and stuff. And I know there's mushrooms ground up in that garden soil, which is great for growing your garden. But there was no way I could protect my eyes from getting that dust from the garden soil in my eyes. So I've already put drops in my eyes two times this morning. And some of the, most of the swelling has gone down, but they're still swollen up. <coughs> Yeah, people just don't know how lucky they are if you don't have allergies. It's a blessing when you do not have allergies. But I've suffered with allergies all my life, and they just got 10 times worse when I moved to Texas. Because I guess growing up where I was, you know, I'd get sick maybe once or twice a year with bronchitis from allergies. But I guess I built up a resistance to the allergies. And they weren't as bad as they are out here. But as long as I've lived out here now, if I move back there now, it would probably be just as bad there because, you know, I haven't lived there in 40-some years. So I don't know how immune I would be to a lot of things like I used to be. Yeah, so remember, if you want to make home-baked biscuits, it's real simple. All you need is water, shortening, flour, self-rising flour. If you don't have self-rising flour, you need uh, baking powder, and you need salt. Because you just add a little bit of that, and it turns it into uh, self-rising flour when you add it. You can add yeast to your biscuits if you want. I do sometimes not... Hardly ever, but I do occasionally to make more of a yeast biscuit with it. Sometimes I add milk. Sometimes it's just water. Sometimes I make uh, buttermilk. Like I told you, I put a little bit of vinegar in a glass of uh, milk, and it turns it to buttermilk. There's always little tricks that you can use, you know, to do stuff like that. They're starting to get brown. A few more minutes and they'll be done. And I'm going to be ready for lunch by the time my biscuits get done. Did I ever tell y'all about the time that uh, I went with my grandmother up to the feed the uh, hog lot? She goes up, she went up there every day in the evening to feed feed the hogs. She'd take a big old slop bucket up there and dump it out in the, the feed trough. And my aunt and uncle live right across the street, the dirt street from where the hog lot was. And my cousin, Robert, he was nicknamed Duty for some reason. And uh, I think it was because one of his little sisters couldn't say his name and they, she would just call him Duty. And it stuck. Well, I think he was a year or two older than me, but not much. And um, he got out there to play a joke on me, and I knew how he was. I knew he always cut up and would play a joke on you, so I was always weary of what he was doing. He said, Linda, get one of them uh, green dog fennels and touch it to the wire over here, and it won't shock you. He said, if you take a dry one, and put on there, it'll shock you. But if you take that green one that's still alive and lay it on that wire, it won't shock you because my grandparents had an electrical fence 
or wire around the hog lot. And it had a real low voltage on it. It wasn't enough that it was going to electrocute you or nothing. But it kept the, the hogs in their, in their lot, you know, in the pen. And uh, I kept telling him no because I knew he was up to something. Well, finally, he just kept on and kept on and kept on. I took the dog fennel, and that's what we called it. It was a long, fuzzy thing that grew back home, almost like a cane, but it had these little fuzzy, not leaves, I don't know what you could call them, that come out on all the way up. I laid that thing down on that fence. Oh, my God, y'all, I couldn't turn it loose. I was like this, you know, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't hurting me, but it was shocking me enough that I couldn't turn it loose, and I was just kind of doing the shimmy, <laughs> and my grandmother saw what was going on, and she took a stick, and she come up there, and she knocked that dog fennel off of the wire, and it immediately stopped, oh, she went after my cousin, she would have beat him to an inch of his life if she could have caught him. He ran for dear life. She told him if he ever did anything like that again, that he was going to, she was going to blister the hide off of him. He was just that mean, and he was laughing the whole time he was running. I mean, thank God, you know, it was just the hog lock, because if it had been a real electric wire with high voltage on it, I probably wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> But yeah, it was enough, just enough voltage on those wires to give the hogs a shock, you know, if they tried to venture out past it. And it would, they knew to back up and stay in the, in that. And it was like an acre size lot. You know, it wasn't no little bitty pen. I mean, they had their pens that they could go in at night and lay down or sleep or whatever they wanted to do. But they had like an acre size pasture that they could run around in. And it was all fenced in with that electric wire. And you know, most of the time they just want to come out and waller in the mud because they they were usually always muddy when we got up there or they were still laying and rolling around in the mud. <laughs> I said, how gross. But I tell you what, they were some of the best sausage, ham, and bacon that you've ever eaten in your life. Because <laughs> like I said, my grandparents would... Um, they had their own smokehouse, and they cured their own hams or bacon, sausage, everything. Pork shoulders, everything that they consumed came off of that farm. Everything but coffee and sugar and flour. My grandparent, my grandmother always took even her corn, would take it to the cornmeal, and they would grind it up, and that's what she used for uh, cornmeal. And she had good cornbread. Okay, just another minute or so. Oh, me. And I guess you're wondering what kind of butter this is in a container like this. Well, I bought a new, a brand new package or tub of butter, I don't know, about two weeks ago. Because this has lasted me for like two weeks or more. And when I brought it in the house and was putting my bags on the table and getting stuff out of the bags, my tub of butter fell in the floor. And it cracked the side of the tub. So guess what? I said, well, this, this container is about the same size as my butter tub. <laughs> so I got me a tablespoon, and I spooned it all out, and I put it in this. And that was my tub of butter. Because, I mean, you know, the butter didn't touch the floor. It, was, it hit hard enough that it cracked the whole side of the butter tub. And I didn't want to leave the butter in there in case I had it out and it started to get real soft and you know, ooze out the crack or something. That would really make a mess. So I didn't want to do that. Well, 
Well, there you go. I got my hamburger bun. <laughs> and I got my tray of biscuit. And another thing that I like to do, and I've always seen my mom do, is take a stick of butter. When you first take your biscuits out of the oven, And this is the easy way to do it, y'all. She didn't melt butter in a bowl or anything like that. She took a stick of butter just like that and rolled it over the top of her biscuit. It kind of softens the the very top of your biscuit keeps them from getting too crusty and it gives them a good butter flavor. <laughs> so there's all kind of reasons why people have can uh, sticks of butter for baking. And this is one of them. It's an easy way to butter the top of your biscuits without having to melt butter. Because there's nothing touching this butter except these biscuits. Then I'm going to put it on top of my bun, too, to get it softened just a little bit on the top. Woo, that's hot. And it slides around that pan. Because you know what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to fry me an egg and maybe a couple of pieces of bacon. And I'm going to make me a bacon egg cheese sandwich with this little with this bigger biscuit <laughs> i'm going to use it just like a hamburger bun kind of there you go you don't have to put too much on there just enough to soften the top you don't want them wet and then you close up your butter for the next time <laughs> or the next time you needed stick butter. See, I keep both. I keep butter on the stick like this, and I keep my soft tub butter as well. And I was gonna get one of my biscuits out and show you, see they started browning a little on the bottom, but I didn't want them too hard, so. They are nice and flaky inside. Take a little bit of this butter and put on there. <laughs> Did I say a little bit? <laughs> My butter fell off. I probably could have just cut. There you go. I got my buttered biscuit. Still too hot to eat, though. But there y'all go. There is my buttered biscuit, and I didn't get it put back on there quite right. <laughs> but that's some good eating right there, y'all. Homemade, fresh-baked biscuit. Homemade biscuit with butter. And this is the old-fashioned way. Mm. That is so good. Y'all need to try it. And with that, I'm going to finish eating my biscuit. I'm going to put a little bit of lunch together. 
and I'm going to see you on my next video. Bye.